Hey everybody, Lars here. Um, this is going to be the third review video for Unit 3, but it is going to be the first of what I hope to be a whole lot of videos that I do today. It's Friday the 13th. Ooh. And I want to crank out a lot of videos because I got to thinking that last semester, and I think the semester beforehand, I didn't do three videos for Unit 3. I did four. Uh, after we're done talking about the stuff we're going to talk about today, I do a separate video where I do a little sample homework problem for myself and I let you watch as I do it because this unit's assignment is a little different than the others. It's a little more complicated. There's some more steps and stuff like that. And I don't want to leave you out in the ocean. I want you to you know, have something to look at. So I do a homework assignment that's similar to some of the things you're going to be doing. And for the last couple of times I've run this course, I separated them out. I did what you're going to get today um, in one video, and I did the sample homework thing in another. But this weekend uh, is Hack Are You, and everybody's getting ready for it, and I'm going to be there tomorrow, and I'm going to be there Sunday as a judge. And I don't know when the next time I'm going to be able to sit down and do videos are. So it's Friday, end of the day Friday. I've got four videos I want to do for you. I want to do Unit 2. I want to go over the quiz. So I want to do a video on that. Um, then for this unit, I need to do this video on the, you know, libraries and things that we're going to review. Then I want to do my sample homework problem. So you can see, use, you know, me using some of the tools we learned in unit three to do a homework problem. And then I want to do a video redoing Euler 6 using functions. So I'm probably going to save that for last. And if something gets the short shrift, it's going to be that. I'll do that next week. Tonight, I already released the rainfall one. I shot that earlier in the week. I gave that to you earlier today. Then I'm going to get you this one. So then at least you're going to have your review videos for the meat and potatoes of the slides. So then I'm not worried about giving you the assignments. But then later tonight, probably at the dining room table, that you have become so familiar with, I will shoot the video for the homework assignment. Then, if I'm feeling spry, late, late tonight, midnight-ish, I'll bang out the quiz video. Because that's not bad. I have it all coded up. I basically have quiz number two in a program. So then I might be able to go through that. Then I can go get my beauty sleep. And... Tomorrow, Hack Are You can start up. And maybe I'll do the Euler from Hack Are You. I've done that before. I shot a video at Global Game Jam once, and I've done some different on site videos in the past. So maybe from Hack, I give you a little flavor of Hack Are You, and then I do the Euler video. I don't know. We'll find out. Regardless, let's get started and start talking about this. You know what's Unit 3? You know, we talked about functions. You know, the last video I gave you, the middle section, is about file IO. This Third section is about using libraries and a topic that I always call modularity. When you get more sophisticated with your programs, you're not going to write a 20 or 30 line program that solves a problem. You're going to write systems that take complex problems and break them down and go to different things to get solutions. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you a little bit about libraries that are already written for you that are already out there. Okay, we're going to look at a little bit of this Python standard library. So I already have a little bit of code waiting for us. Not a lot. I don't even think it's any code. I think it's just a shell. Yeah, I created a, pro, a little program for us. So let's just create a list. And I'll do my odd number, my even numbers like I usually do. Good enough. And uh-oh, brace. Daddy wants a bracket. And then I'll say A equals the sum of my list. And why I put space in there, I don't know. And then I'll run that. And I get nothing because I didn't print A. Fruitful functions. And look at that, I get 42. Answered. Solution to the biggest problem we got. And Jackie Robinson. So I use my built in function sum to get the list, but somewhere in my days I heard about a function called square root. So I can get the square root of a number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the square root function on A and then print B. Okay? 
Okay, Let's see what we got to say. Run. Boom, 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 boom. Name square root is not defined. I know I heard about a square root somewhere because I've been doing this for a while. But it turns out that square root is a function that's in a library. And I need to bring that code from that library in here to use it. Now, how do I do that? If I know what the library is, I use a keyword called import. And I import the name of the library. In this case, the library is called math. Okay? We're not done yet, though. And I import the math library. I'm telling Python, hey, if I use a function you're not familiar with, go look in the math library and see if maybe it's in there. But one thing I do have to do, because I just used an import statement, is I need to tell Python, hey, go look in the math library. You know, it's been imported. We're tied with it. But go look there to go get my square root function to use. Okay? So now I've imported the math library. I've told this equation, hey, go use the function sqrt square root in the math library to find the square root of a. And when I rerun, I find out the square root of 42 is 6.48. Okay? So now I'm using the math library. Now, you might be saying to yourself, oh, that's wonderful. How the hell am I supposed to know what's in the math library? I know, I've been doing this for a while. Well, this is what you want to do. What you want to do is go to Google and just type in Python docs standard library. And the first thing it is going to pop up is the standard library page. And I thought I clicked on it. Hold on a second. Come on in. You realize I'm filming a video. Come on in. What do you need? Do I have access to the closet or is it just a cube? It's just a cube. Do you want access to the closet? Okay. All right. Picking up again where we left off. It's, as I told you, it's the day before hacking. <laughs> Hack, hack our you. So there are people coming in and out and in and out. All right. Hopefully we get the next 10 or 15 minutes without being interrupted again. But what I was going to say is when you're running your code and you have the square root function, you're like, well, how do I know what functions are there? Come to this page. Like I say, it's you guys have it made in the shade because everything, all the instructions, all these things are online. You got it for free right here on the web. Idiots like me back in the 80s, I had to run to the library or run to the bookstore and look things up there. I couldn't, we didn't have the web in the 80s. We couldn't do this kind of stuff. You, you guys are lucky. And look at this. Numeric mathematical modules, math right there. Boom. Ceiling, factorial, absolute value. Greatest common denominator, blah, blah, blah. And you'll see if you come all the way down here. Square root. All right. And this is where you can learn about all of the different libraries you can use, collections, container data types. You'll learn about that later. And fractions, things to deal with fractions, iteration tools. You use that a lot with Project Euler stuff. Um, down here, there's one called Sys that lets you use system commands and system tools. Pickle is down here. I just saw it as I was going by. So this is where you come, the Python standard library. And you, you're just learning the basics right now. And from now on, if you think you want to do something, go check the libraries. Because most of the simple stuff that you want to do as a computer programmer, it's already been handled. It's already been written for you. All these functions are there for you to use. You just have to become familiar with it. Okay, the strings, look at that, regular expressions if you know what they are. A um, whole bunch of different things. Things to deal with date, time, calendar, time is in here. So you can time things and, and do other things with timing, okay? There's Pickle, like I told you before. There's all kinds of stuff in the standard library. And this is where you're going to come to figure things out. So if I'm just, you know, tooling down here and I go to math, I see like ceiling and floor and things like that. I can look in here and I can see what's available to me to use. So if I wanted to, I could say C equals math dot floor B. And I can say D and assign that math dot ceiling B. Yeah, because that works. B. And then I'll print C and D. What am I doing? I'm crazy with the lines today. And then when I run that, 
Boom. You see, I get six and seven because floor rounds down and ceiling rounds up. So I get six and seven. I don't have to stick with math. I can extend my import and import the statistics library. And then I can just say E equals statistics.mean of my list. And that's simply print E. I'm dum 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 dum. What I misspell? I misspell my list. That quickly, I am. Look at that. What are the odds? Seven. The mean is exactly seven. Let's put a funky number in there. Now the mean is 10.85, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So just like that, I'm doing statistics. Okay. So you look at the standard library and you see all the different things there are to do. And you'll see, as you go through the course, you're going to see new things that we import and new things that we do. And as you're going to look at online resources, because invariably you are going to go look at online resources once you start coding. And once you start saying, I want to do website stuff, I want to do this, I want to do that. So you'll learn what curl is, or you'll learn what Flask is, a third-party library, and you'll start using all of that stuff. Okay? So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about using libraries. The standard libraries have a bunch of code out there. It's already written for you. All you have to do is import it and go ahead and use it. There's one more thing I'm going to show you as far as well. And there's two more things I want to show you. There's one more thing I'm going to show you here is that if I wanted to, I could use the from keyword and say from math import and then just name all the different functions I want to grab. So in here, I'm going to grab square root. I'm going to grab floor. And I'm going to grab ceiling, and then I'm going to say from statistics, go ahead and import uh, mean. Okay. Then if I ran this, I believe it's blood. Hold on, and it's blood because what I've done is I've created a situation where I don't need the library name in front of it because I've done what's called mapping. Basically what I've done here, up here with the from import, is I've mapped these functions to the math library. And I've mapped mean to the stats library so that when it sees mean, it knows, boom, go to the stats library because of this line up here. Now that I got rid of all of those prefixes, now when I run it, I'm back in business and I'm good to go. Okay. Now that I've shown you that, don't use it <laughs> because basically I don't like it and I'll tell you why. I'm going to say import math, comma, statistics because you're going to get this. I'm going to put this up on the web for you. And when you start writing code, it is not going to be as simple as what we're doing right here. It's going to be longer and in a bunch of different places. And I like to know where I'm going to get, look at that, and Idle's gonna tell us all the different things we can do inside of statistics. Idle, Idle, I want you when you're reading code to know exactly where you're going to get that function. That's all, at the end of the day. So if I'm doing floor or ceiling, I wanna tell you that it's in the math library. I wanna tell you that mean is in the statistics library and where to go and what to do to go get it. So I like just using a regular import you can use from import, a lot of people do, but then you just have the name, and I don't know whether it's homegrown, I don't know whether it's a built-in, I don't know, well, I don't color it weird if it's a built-in, but I don't know what is going on. You'll notice here, these functions don't turn colors with idle, because I'm reading them from libraries. Idle really only colors the built-ins. Okay, other IDEs are different, they will color the functions that you bring in from other places. But I digress. Um, there is one more thing that I'm going to show you. This, I think, is the last bit of code I'm going to show you. So that actually is going to act as your grand finale. But do we do it out here? I think I'm going to use this eventually. Um, I'm going to grab File Explorer. And I'm going to go to my hard drive. And I know because of the way I do things. I got Windows 8.1. I didn't upgrade to 10. Didn't see any reason to do it. Uh, so I know for a fact I put my Python stuff in Python 3.4, Python 3.6, Python 2.7. So I'm going to go to Python 3.6, and I'm going to look at my Python implementation. If you're using Windows 10, which I know a lot of you are, Python was put in a really weird place. OK, 
okay? It was put like in your user directory, then your name, then like app data, then a whole bunch of different things. And your Python's in an odd place for whatever reason, they don't want you to find it and tinker yourself, okay? I put mine at the very top of my hierarchy tree with my file system in Python 3.6, okay? So once you find your Python implementation, you should see this. Bunch of directories, DLL, doc, include, lib, libs, scripts, blah, 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 and then these files right here, okay? If you go to uppercase L lib, all right, and come down here, these are your libraries right here. And if you desire, you can double click on them and look at the code. All right. So if I want, I can come down here and I can say statistics and I can go find the, where are you? The statistics right there comes up in notepad. And then I could come down here and I can look for mean and I can look for all the different code. Okay. There's is infinite. There's extracts, counts, whole bunch of stuff. There's mean right there. Okay. And as you can see, they use the three quotes to do comments and different things like that. So if you want to know how there's harmonic mean, if you want to know how things work, you can always come here and look at the code. They're doing some stuff that you don't have to, you haven't dealt with yet, like templates and whatnot, but you don't have to worry about that right now. Okay. So you can always, yeah, oh, look at that alien. We're ruining my videos since 2015. Thanks a lot, Alienware. Tell me more. Remind me later, idiots. All right. So you got the statistics. That great. That's great. What if all of a sudden you said to yourself, I want to go look at the math library. So I come up here to the M's and M-A-T-A-T. Math isn't there. Okay. And if you go to look at the math library and you don't find it, I want you to know what's going on. You remember... When we started with functions and sum was a built-in and int was a built-in and string was a built-in, Python also has built-in libraries. When Python first came to fruition, late 90s, uh, Guido von Rossum was using C. He was using the C programming language and a little C++, but C mostly, to implement Python. And it just became easier to use the C libraries for a lot of Python stuff. So there's a lot of libraries that you will import in Python, math, sys, uh, I think time is one of them, that are really just the C libraries. You're going and using the C libraries, and they're there. They're in the Python installation, but they're not written in Python. They're the raw C libraries. And a lot of times they're in, in what we call object code or binary code. So you can't really read them. Some you can read, some you can't. That kind of gets in the weeds a little bit. But basically, they're not going to be there. They're going to be somewhere else. In a Windows system, they'll be in what's called a DLL, a dynamic linking library. And you'll be able to use the code, but it's not in a way you can read it. And the way I usually tell people this, come here to the interactive window and type import sys. Okay, and that'll load a whole bunch of lists and a whole bunch of informative stuff. And then what I think we want to do is we want to look at sys, uh, is it built-ins? sys.builtins.modules underscore names. And if you look at that, uh-oh, dun, 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 dun. What was it? sys.builtin, is it built-in? Ah, it's built-in, I bet. Let's go. I misspelled it. Let's go there. Let's paste. Then let's go back down here. Ah, oh, what is it? And we're, uh, is it not? It's not two dunders, is it? it says stop built in. All right. It says stop built in. Dot, oh, it's underscore. Look at that. And it is names, module names, but it's an underscore there instead of a dot. Okay, let's look. Do, 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 do. Nope. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. So it's built-ins, modules, names. Is it names or name? Let's try that. Nope. What did it say it was? 
sys.builtin.modules names. Isn't that what we're doing? No, built ins. <laughs> oh, it's always something. Sys.builtin.modules.names. People walking in the office don't have the right name. System built in dot modules underscore names. That's what I thought it was. Let's see what this tells me. Did you mean built in module names? How do I? Oh, there we go. We'll go to Stack Overflow and get the answer. Don't you go to Stack Overflow and go get the answer. Do, 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 do. Sys.builtinmodule.name. That's what I'm doing. Isn't it? Am I spelling it wrong? Ah, oh, for the love of Christmas. Built in underscore module names. Thank goodness. My God. You shouldn't have to see all that. I'm going to leave it though. So you can see the nonsense you go through is the same nonsense we go through. Us morons that have been doing this for 35 years, we still run into this craziness. All right. You punch that in. It's a, it's a list. Well, it's, it's a listing of all of the libraries that are built-ins. Okay? And as you can see, you can come down here and you'll see math is one of them. And so is time. And so is, what was the other one I told you about? Oh, there's iteration tools. That's a good one for Project Euler things. Uh, oh, sys, right? Yeah, sys is right there. Okay. So sys.builtin underscore module underscore names is where you want to go to look for the built-ins. All right? All right. Uh, here's a little Easter egg for you. If you type import this, you get the Zen of Python by Tim Peters. A little Easter egg. All right. I may have told you about that already in the first one. I don't know if I told you about that in the first set of slides. All right. Thank you, Stack Overflow. Shouldn't have to rely on you in a video. All right. Python Standard Library right there. You don't have to remember that. Just go to Google and say Standard Library Python. And you'll get all that stuff. All right. So I go back to the code and we look. And I'm going to take some lib stuff and I'm going to put it up on Sakai for you. Let's run it again just to do a finale, okay? All right. This is the end of the third Unit 3 video, but I am going to do more stuff in the homework video where I do my own little homework assignment, and that's where you're going to see me creating my own libraries. So if you're saying to yourself, yeah, yeah, this is only the beginning of the third part of the slide, you're right. I'm going to do some other stuff in that video, and there's where you're going to see me creating my own libraries and importing my own libraries and doing my own thing. I'm going to be doing it over there. We're not going to really discuss third-party libraries that much, but you don't have to worry about it because you don't need them for your homework assignment, and you don't need them to answer quiz questions or to do anything like that. So don't get, don't worry about nonsense like NumPy and SciPy and all that. Don't worry about that right now. Those third-party ones that you have to install, like they're extra programs, they're add-ons, you know, technically it's what they are. Okay, don't worry about that. Worry about this. And then in the next video where I do my little homework assignment, hopefully I get you that today too, then I'll go over stuff as far as creating my own library and importing my own library. All right? All right, then I'm not going to do announcements because I'm going to do announcements at the end of the homework one. I should be able to get it shot tonight and get things done. All right? All right, good. Then I'm getting out of here. You be good. And I'll probably be seeing you a little bit later when I do the homework. All right? All right, I'll touch you later, bye.